Welcome brothers and sisters to Issues. We have subjects that we're going to talk about. Seeing that you all love so much the reality of Mark and Amy and Jason, we've decided to get together and discuss issues and experiences as Natsurim coming out of the circus into a Natsurim lifestyle and a relationship with Yahusha. We've decided to discuss issues and uh, last week, was it Mark? Last week we decided to talk about child rearing. Okay, so I wanted to show you from the weekend post. This is an article that goes into Cairns. Also, this is an article that Lou White wrote. It's called The Mark of the Beast. There it is on page 23, and it goes to about 150,000 people, folk, all through Cairns, and we don't know where else Yahushua's going to send it. But in the same paper, there was an issue out, and it's called by Lauren Dor, and it says, UN should butt out. I'm just going to read to you, it's about child rearing. And this is an article about the UN in the Cairns Weekend Post. Now can you imagine uh, creating a law to stop parents smacking their kids is a debate that smacks of interference. A recent UN proposal calling on Australian parents to stop smacking their kids has kicked up one almighty response on social media. The Cairns Post Facebook page was inundated with feedback on the proposal with some excellent points being made from both sides of the fence. But of course, the haters, who majoritively seem to be in favour of smacking and would cut down the non-smackers, were also out in full force. The clear majority response was from parents who were in favour of giving their children a belt when they have been misbehaving. Parents know their children best, and so when I read of some responses from parents who had worked out that smacking was the most effective way to get their child to behave, I could sympathise. All kids are very different, and there are some firecrackers out there. I have quite a few mates who give their kids a good whack when their child misbehaves and from what I can see their children are growing up perfectly balanced, happy and healthy kids. I have also watched these same parents use excellent techniques in communicating with their children and leaving the smacks as a final option. As for me, I don't think getting physical has ever solved problems. With the exception of when Billy Slater smacked down the fool who punched him in an unprovoked attack recently. That was on television, everyone. Uh, and they had pictures of a young, young boy. He's bigger than and this young kid. He's smaller than Billy. Came up and smashed him in the face and Billy went and jobbed him right, right out. And everyone was up in arms about that too. I have tried smacking as a disciplinary measure a few times, but it just didn't work and it felt wrong. I once gave my little fella a tap on the bum for being naughty. He looked so incredibly devastated the second time I did it. He hit me back, which made me realise the futility of it. What would be my next move? To hit him even harder or teach him not to hit me? I don't think so. I was teaching him to behave in the same way, obvious, really. Another reason I am not a fan is I just don't like to hit, especially one that I love so much. I still discipline him, but just not that way. I've taken this stance even though, as a kid, I copped a few stinging hits across the bum when I misbehaved. And I reckon I turned out all right. Some may disagree with this. I am certainly not claiming to be the perfect parent, but for my son and me, this works. 
by no means do parents who smack their kids as a disciplinary measure love their children any less, which would be a ridiculous notion. So what exactly does the UN want? What does the UN want? The UN is butting in. It says parents who smack their children should be prosecuted and all professionals who work with children should be ordered to dob in parents who do. <clears throat> the Royal Australian College of Physicians weighed in on the debate calling for physical punishment to be made unlawful and the smacking can lead to depression, listen to this one, anxiety, aggression and substance abuse among children. That's what they say smacking can cause. A teacher dobbing in a parent who gives their kids a tap on the bum now and then would be ridiculous. And crossing into nanny state territory. Nanny state. <clears throat> but it's a fair call if the hitting is going too far and the child is withdrawing or showing other signs of concerned behaviour concerning behaviour, which is already in place anyway. A reader sent a text to the Cairns Post which raised another poignant issue, basically asking why the UN is putting its focus into Aussie parents smacking their kids, when there are very serious other issues internationally which desperately need attention. Issues such as child prostitution, Poverty leading to a lack of education, sanitation, etc. And children suffering from violence in war-torn countries. Parents smacking kids and children starving to death, for example, are such polar opposites that this latest campaign appears to be boring, bordering on the ridiculous. Regardless of whether the UN is parfaying around possibly dreaming up issues to look productive, going by the huge amount of feedback on the issue, the conversation is still worth having, according to National Children's Commissioner Megan Mitchell, who presented the UN report to Federal Parliament. Is smacking OK? Where do the boundaries lie? Or should the UN and the government just butt out and let parents do what they feel? is right by their child, knowing that the correct procedures are in place when children are abused. No doubt the conversation will continue to be lively for, for some time. Okay, that's an article in the Cairns Post about the UN butting in to our family lives. And we all know what the UN stands for, don't we? So we've gathered together here, that was just an incident that came this morning as I read the paper, because I wanted to see Lou's article in the paper, and that came up this morning. So how amazing is Yahusha to arrange that article to be in the paper so that we can lead it into our talk. Now we've got Mark and Amy and Jason and Victoria here, and all I'm going to ask them is how they feel about child rearing and what they think about the article. So who am I handing it over to first? Well, the article, far out, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> um, I think it's ridiculous what they're saying about smacking leading to depression and anxiety. Because those are things that are only really around now and getting worse and worse as people step away from smacking. When everyone smacked their children <coughs> years ago, they didn't have those problems. So it seems like, it just seems like common sense to smack your kids. Like, <laughs> like it's the opposite. So I think whether they make it illegal or not, it's not going to stop me from smacking the kids close the windows anyway, so no one can hear. <laughs> but um, I think that that's just another issue that if people, like that people will condemn us for, 
because there's so many people out there that it's like not in to smack your kids. It's so wrong nowadays. Everyone's saying it's so wrong. And people are going as far now as to say you shouldn't even be disciplining your children at all. You should let them do what they want to do and have and make their own rules and their own bedtimes and eat what they want when they want and and do whatever they want because it's becoming a bigger and bigger movement. Keep them emotionally stable. So that yeah, because then they can become a own <coughs> person and be free and show me which adult in life gets to be free and do their own thing and you know, like it's not it's it's so insane, it's ridiculous that we're raising children to go against like to not be able to work hard and see we've gone through this last this week with Josiah to, to doing schoolwork. He didn't want to work hard, he didn't want to put in the effort, he throw a tantrum every time he had to do anything and he'd get soupy. So he got smacked on the bum. And then I sat down and spoke to him and said, if you don't work hard, you're never going to get blessed. You're never going to achieve anything in life. Did it go through Elvis? Oh, sorry. How sorry. Is that article sorry. today? No. How amazing. Yeah, that's funny. Mm -hmm. I thought, when you started reading it, I thought, wow, how did you plan that? That was only like today. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I saw something on Facebook this week that, that um, <coughs> Tony Abbott had said that he's not going to, that he agrees in smacking yeah. and that he won't pull yeah, it out. Yeah, I saw that. And so, mm. and people have arms at him, but I think, well, this is like something, right? Mm. Mm. So. Yeah. There's another thing that came out in Uganda that brought in the penalty of um, jail term for people who were caught doing homosexual acts. Oh, really? In Uganda, and the, the Prime Minister there saying because they want to keep the family unit together and, and look after their children and the morality of their, of their country. And, oh, oh it's well, just wonderful. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> just this little that country never again. <laughs> it was like that when I grew up. It was. Yeah, but not now. No. Now that you've got so many. That's, that's 30 years ago, yeah. 40 years ago, yeah. or less. Yeah. Well, she was saying, like in the article, like the school teachers and all that would dob in, yeah. and so then but Amy's the school teacher, yeah. and the mother. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're safe like that. Mm. Well, Isn't so, it becoming so controlling? Yeah, the schools, yeah, like, the teachers. You know, you can't go, so you send them to school and they're going to... The UN. Yeah. The UN. They want to control I reckon it's the Jesuits. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. And then I love the point they made in the article about starvation <coughs> and poverty around the world and they're interested in Australians smacking Smacky. their kids mm. to punish them, to discipline because parents actually want to raise their children properly and respectfully, to be respectful and behave themselves and, and they can't have that mm. because if people, start, if people were raising their children properly then they wouldn't be able to, there wouldn't be so much chaos and and so much drama in the world. Mm. So, <coughs> but yeah. So yeah, I was talking to Josiah and saying how he needs to work hard and try at everything he's doing, because but and like and do his best all the time. So even if your best isn't perfect, you have to always try your best at everything. Mm. So then you get the blessing. And funnily enough, we've told we've done the story about. Um, Cain and Abel and how he killed his brother and everything because they got and so we had a big discussion about that and brought that in and how Abel had brought his best and to the to Yahuwah and so um but people now are teaching their children that they don't have to try their best if they don't want to and they you know like that's not how they feel that day or they don't want to be like that or that's not something that interests them they don't have to do it and and so it's just it's terrifying to think of what the next, like this young generation mm -hmm. is going to be like as adults. If time goes on long enough, yeah, whew, it'd be far, it'd be bad mm. because you go, you'll have a generation of people who don't want to work and want everything handed to them and don't feel like doing this and don't feel like doing that. Throw a tantrum if they want their way, and so mm. we're pretty, we're pretty excited <coughs> about smacking here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So our stick gets a good workout. Mm. But it worked because like after that, Josiah was a nightmare. 
And this is why I ended up sending him to school in Mallacoota because he's worse now. Like he's been worse this week than he had was before. But he started to, like just back chatting and arguing and I don't want to do that. I don't like doing that. I hate doing this. And I said, to, I took him in there after he got his smacks. I said to him, I'm not giving in. You are not going to win. You're not going to school. You're going to stay here and you're going to get over this and you're going to work hard. You're going to snap out of this. You're going to change. So I'm not going to send you to school and let you just keep doing this. I said, you're going to stay here and I'm going to make you change. <laughs> and then from that time on, the afternoon, after talking about the story, I was in the middle of the scripture lesson talking about that, he, like, he's been great all week. Mm. Just those smacks and that conversation. I do the smacks first so I knew I was serious. Mm-hmm. And then he listened to me and the conversation then, and like then his um, behaviour during the week in doing his schoolwork, he got up extra early the next morning to do schoolwork, like so he'd get it done earlier and try and do more. Mm-hmm. So he just changed. Mm-hmm. I don't think that um, sitting down and having a lovely conversation with him and saying, yeah, if you don't really want to do it, you don't, it's not going to help him. It's not going to help him in his life. What's he going to learn? What's he going to grow up learning? So, went in. I don't know. It helped. It's made a big difference in this last, how long we've been up here in Atherton. The kids are almost a year at school in Malacuta and our whole life was just total chaos at that time. After we come up here and started making changes after the suggestions Chris and Victoria have made, the kids have changed <coughs> dramatically, don't you think? Yeah. Certainly, right now. What do you think? I am. Uh, well, just seeing what I've gone through, my smacking the children in the past has been very emotional and like uh, in the spirit of the moment. And I'm finding now that when when you do it the right way, I don't actually feel like smacking them ever, which is a bad thing because. It means that before I was doing it in anger, whereas now when I'm not as angry at them, because they're much better behaved, I don't feel like doing it. Which shows me that it takes effort to do the right thing. Because um, often Amy will look at me and go, they've got to be smacked for that. And I'll be like, yeah, okay. No, they've got to be smacked for that. So I have to get up and um, whack them. <laughs> yeah, put hands on the bed, do it properly. And they respect the stick. They respect... Mm-hmm. Daddy and mummy for it. And um, whereas before, I used to smack them all the time, but it was just because I was so angry and you know, it was done at the wrong time, in the heat of the moment, you know, I'd maybe go back half an hour later because I'd feel guilty and give them a cuddle. It wasn't planned out, it wasn't, you know, premeditated like it is now. Like we might be eating something and I'll hear something go down and say, yep, yeah, just a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need to deal with this. So it's not like I'm just, well, all right, you know, I'm getting in there. It's like, it's like, okay, she'll say, they're going to smack for it. Okay, right, yeah, in a minute. And when I go and smack them, and they talk to them straight away, like something you said years ago, like the stick is for smacking and your hands are for loving. Um, so the child, you're not constantly just hitting them with, with the hands all the time. Um, I'm finding doing it balanced. They do something wrong, they have to be punished, so it's got to be done the right way. So that's what I'm finding. Um, and there's something in that article about um, loving. Somebody who loves their children, doesn't want to smack their children or something like that. That's just totally opposite to Torah. That's totally opposite to Torah. What's up, Mikey? No, 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 no. We're in the middle of the show. You stay up in the garage and shut the door, please. Remember? Remember what you're saying? So Torah tells you that if you don't, Smack your child, you don't love your child. Yeah, so she said the exact opposite to Torah. Yeah. <laughs> I forget how she worded it, but I thought that's yeah. the opposite to Torah. I don't feel pressure. Mm-hmm. I want it to be as relaxing mm-hmm. as possible. <laughs> you know, just look at our reality, our experiences all together. Mm-hmm. You know, because this is to affect the Natsaran. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we can relax a bit. It doesn't have to be such a serious subject. I was just going to say it's a really serious thing. Oh, well. <laughs> Go ahead and say it. No, I just, I just feel like the, the, um, <coughs> the rearing of children, what it was talking about here and how um, it's so orchestrated how the UN have, have planned this, who's behind the UN, who's controlling all this, 
what do they want the children to be left to their own devices for? I mean, this is just, it's just a, a great plan that's being put on society worldwide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just disgusting because this is, this is what's being taken away from parent, parents. Parents are the family unit. Again, mm. the family unit's going to be, mm. is, is being undermined. And um, you just look globally, you look at the whole world, of all the families worldwide and what's happening to them. I mean, why is this happening? It's just an incredible movement that's going through. And just to get this out of the paper today, mm. to hear this, you think it, it is so serious underneath. What's underneath this? Why do they want all the children? And That's yeah. pretty easy, isn't it? Yeah. What? Because they want to control them and they would want, don't want them to... Take them. away the con Ten Commandments. Mm. Yeah. You've got ignorance. Yeah. The real meaning of ignorance is not knowing. Yeah. So you have a whole group of people that have no morality because mm. the Ten Commandments are our morality. Mm. They're our wedding vows. Yeah. That's the covenant between <clears throat> us and the Creator. So they've taken that away from the generations yeah. that are coming up now. Mm. Mm. So what have you got? Chaos. Yeah. And they don't know the way, they don't know how to teach mm. because there's no morality. Yeah. There's no truth left. Yes. So they've got a whole, all over the world, they've got stacks and stacks of young people with no morality or understanding and no truth. Mm. So where does that leave us? What are they going to do with them? Manipulate them and use them mm. and get them back as slaves mm. without education as they had before. Mm. So the Jesuits are trying to get back yeah. that place. And what's this called? The new... Order. New World Order. There it is at Cairns. Yeah, coming through. Well, in the article, she never mentioned once about um, what Yahuwah, like any of the commandments. She doesn't know. And she sounded like she's a single mother. And why? Obviously, to you, why didn't she mention it? Yeah, like you're saying, ignorance, they don't know. No, because it hasn't been, hasn't been handed down. How blessed are we to get them? Mm -hmm. And referring back to the UN, what they're saying. And it shouldn't be. Yeah. Well, when we've got the Ten Commandments, which is our wedding vows, we've, it's been given to us as understanding and we have wisdom. It's wisdom. Now, it's a different mindset, but out there in the world, they don't have this. They don't have this understanding, this mindset. You can only get it through entering into Jerusalem, becoming part of Israel. Can't you? Mm -hmm. Through immersion. It's the only way you can come into it because it says the word is alive, right? It's alive for a start and it's life. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get that life into you, you've got, you're not alive. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're called the walking dead, the world. And Nazarim are not taking hold of this knowledge. Mm -hmm. As you see, this is why we want to talk like this and get this word out yeah. to the Nazarim so they know how to behave. And we're talking about how to rear children today. What's the real reason? So we start with, we look at children from the age of 3 to um, 15. That's what we want to put in our minds while we're having this discussion. Because mm -hmm. over 15, they're they can supposedly make decisions for themselves. Yeah. Right? So the child rearing is all right from the beginning to, mm -hmm. to 15, up to the age of 15, isn't it? Yeah. And then after that, they've got to start making decisions. You're there as guiding and leading and helping, but they've got to start okay. making decisions. So what have you got to do as parents? What have we all got to do as parents with those kids? Hmm? Teaching the truth. Well, yeah. yeah. Great to say, but you've got to lay it out what should be done. Mm. That's what we're looking at. Child rearing according to Torah. Torah. Mm. What do we do with them? Mm. 
I had a lady in the, in the shop the other day. She had a little three-year-old and he was walking around and there was an electric fan there right in his face and he's pressing the buttons on and the fan's wobbling like this. Could fall on his face. I said, naughty boy, don't do that. And the mother came over and said, he's not a naughty boy, he's only 18 months old or something. It wasn't three, it was 18 months, wasn't he? Yeah. And we just looked at each other and thought, well, we're not going to say anything, but the ignorance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's not a naughty boy. He's only 18 months old. Obviously she doesn't believe in chastising or smacking. Mm -hmm. Obvious. Mm -hmm. So look at that answer. And she was just arrogant and rude. So you, of course we have to be kind. That's the behaviour we have to have towards everyone. Mm. Kindness. And if you're not in the place where you're giving kindness, mm. what are you doing? What are you giving? Brothers and sisters out there, our behaviour is the most, most important thing in the world. Mm. And it should be kindness to everyone in every circumstance in every situation we should be offering kindness no matter what comes to us yeah so when we look at child rearing from that age what have we got to do you can see what the world's telling us to do the UN up here in Cairns okay what have we got to do? I'm asking a question. For me, it's, it's spending time. We had a chat with Chris and Victoria about a month ago about this. And so um, we've woken Ellie and I to a few things that we need to do at our home for our children. And it's spending time um, with the kids. And so my children go to school. And um, so um, they're in the system. So we know. Um, how much or how involved the schools and the teachers are involved in our lives and um, you know they, they don't like it like we ask them not to teach them about Christmas and bunny rabbit season and so they still can't comply with that they still have to um, you know get the children involved somehow and so I think so we have to spend time with our children and, and keep them separated from worldly events and um, minds, mindsets and systems. And so our job, and it's really important, we have to bring the word in, in, into everything. We have to spend time like talking. We have a lot of time talking to the children you know, about everything. That's it. Because I think it's just a, a, a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Giving the children time. Yeah. What were you going to say? That was similar to what I was going to say. I think one thing that I realised this week was like, we've got to be filling them with Torah all the time. Like Chris was saying, after about the age of 15, they start to make their own decisions. I think up until that stage, we've got the chance to fill them as much as we can so that when they do start making their own decisions, it's coming back to them what they've learned. And just as well, when we were doing one of the lessons this week and talking about the armour, one of the, like you've got your, um, what was it, the, the Torah, is your, your sword, you know, is it a sword? sword mm. yeah. So, and you were saying if you don't know it, then you can't use it to fight everything. And so I think it was just a matter of bringing it, like you were saying, bring it into everything all the time and teaching them constantly. Everything has to be checked. Is that Torah? Is that... Is that, are you obeying the commandments? Do they know the commandments? If they don't know the commandments, then mm. well, that's, that's a starting point, you know. That's a, you know, being able to bring that back. Are you obeying the commandments? Have you, mm. you know, in, in everything that they're doing, bring it all back to Torah when they get punished? You know, why did you just get into trouble? Why did you just get a smack? Did you go against Torah? Did you go against the commandments and stuff? I think it's always just bringing it back to that and making. You know, Yahuwah and Scripture, like, the focus. Because I know how quick Sophia has responded. I mean, she's our, our three-year-old, 
and she goes to daycare and so when all this Christmas celebration started and so that they had you know they were setting up the the uh, the Christmas trees and Santa paintings and so she would come home and talk about uh, Christmas you know events that are going on it's exciting and, yeah and so we would say that's naughty that's wrong and she would say no it's not no it's not <laughs> and then after just teaching her after a, a couple of weeks <clears throat> now she doesn't run up to the Christmas tree and want to touch it she'll point out and say that's naughty so you know, it's in, in two funny. weeks so they've mm. learned already well she's mm. learned already mm. it doesn't take long mm. and they understand Mm. Mm. Yeah, they're much more intelligent than we give them credit for, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. They're so clever. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And she didn't fight it. Mm. And it and it looks to it was really enticing all the lights and mm. and um, you know, the candy and mm. um, like that what they have that, that little sugar cane thing, yeah. the little candy cane. Candy cane. Mm. Yeah, everything's aimed at the kids, isn't it? Yeah. Bring them in so that they'll be caught in it. But yeah. what's the UN doing here? We're trying to Aiming at the, the kids. The kids. The yeah. What's mm. Easter? E A S T E R. Sorry. Yeah. What's cool. that well, doing? Kids, chocolate. To, to, to draw them mm. in yeah. so they carry on the yeah. traditions. They mm. think, oh, it was so much fun when I was a kid. I can't wait to do it with my children. You know, forget what it really means. Who cares? Well, when you look at all the traditions, where do they all come from? Pagans. Babylon, yeah, they mainly today, where are they from? The circus. That's right. Oh, yeah. mm. They have adopted yeah. all that paganism mm. into their services and everything and mindset and lifestyle. So who's controlling the circus? Jesuits. That's right. And who's controlling the Jesuits? Satan. So the teaching that the children are receiving is evil. If you teach your children about Christmas, you're teaching them how to worship Satan and it's evil. Mm. Mm. So you're better off to tell the children what does it what what are some of the things that evil does to a, a person? It, it gives you those symptoms that she said <laughs> gives you some smacking. You've withdrawn. Yeah. What were they? Depressed. Depressed. Anxious. Yeah. Anxious. That's what sin. Was it sin? Evil. That's what evil does. Yeah. It so makes you you're sure. saying evil damages your mind. Yeah. And mental health problems, which are becoming more like almost every person has some sort of mental health problem. Yeah, it's embedded that too. So Hence, if you don't too. give the kids yeah, the drugs. Ten Commandments, yeah. Yeah. they develop. Yeah. Problems. Yeah. Problems. Yeah. And there's a drug for that. Yes. Yeah. And what else what else does it do to the body? Makes it sick. Evil makes your body sick. Mm -hmm. right. Angry, so, hateful. If you're teaching your children or these traditions, they will eventually die. Kill Oh, yeah, yeah. it'll eventually kill you. Yeah. So if you actually look at those teachings over and over again, you keep feeding them, mm. keep feeding them, doing them, it'll mm. kill you. Mm. It'll kill your joy, it'll kill your love, it'll mm. kill so much yeah. inside you. And yet, it's like a drug, they keep mm. doing it. Mm. keep destroying themselves it's going to bring them to destruction mm -hmm. so you can see the Jesuits through Constantine have come in and changed and stood up as the false bride mm -hmm. and since, those, since his time Constantine that false bride has been rearing her ugly head saying I don't need a husband mm -hmm. I am yeah on earth I am mm. declaring that she is yeah she's Yahuwah yeah. mm. it all comes through her and it's all a lie yeah. so what do lies do 
be sick. Making right decisions. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Making the right decisions in life for themselves mm. and their family to pass on yeah. to their generations the truth. Mm. Right? Yeah. So how do we go about child rearing? We look at those scriptures, don't we? comes down to smacking what they're saying in this article today about smacking. Mm. Scripture says, if you don't smack your child, you don't love them. Scripture says, Yahuwah says, if you don't smack your child, you don't love them. Well, of course, there's, you can go to extremes with smacking. But if you're filled with his spirit, you wouldn't go to extremes. Mm -hmm. So I'm just laying down a plan here. It mm -hmm. says, spare, I think there's an old saying, spare the rod, spoil the child. If you spare the rod, if you don't smack the child, you're spoiling the child. Mm -hmm. There you are. And what's the other one? Bring up a child in the way it should go and it will to return back to the word later on. I may not have these scriptures specifically straightforward, but if we're Nazarim, we're not going to harbour about what the scripture actually says, who, what, what it really means, and blah, 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 and go into all that ridiculous carry-on, are we? We're just going to share the truth of the word, which is obvious in spirit among us. It's obvious that it's... It is what it says it is. And so, if you want to carry on and go that way, well, you're going to go the wrong way for a start. We're not picking things out. That's not the way to go. We just want to look at the issue. So, guys, when you look at those issues, those scriptures, what's the plan? What's the plan? How do you go about it? Of course, if you have children three, that would be different to kids that are nine and ten, yeah. which would be different to kids that are 12 and 13 and 14. So what's the plan? How do you do it? How do you go about it? What are you going to do? How are you going to plan it out? What's the way to do it? Hey! <laughs> mm. All right. A client the other day in the salon, well, she wasn't my client, it was a, another lady's client, but she, she had her children in the salon. And um, I'm just saying this because I'm just thinking about it before. And so the children are being naughty, the lady's trying to cut the mother's hair, and the children are opening the drawers, and you know, and the lady's got scissors. And, and the mother said, Children, she's speaking of her own children, children are not as well behaved as they used to be. Uh, you know, a long time ago, and so you know that 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 started discussion that day in the salon, and so you know the mother's blaming the children, and so you know so that made me think, you know, like preparation time, like that before the mother brings those children in, in into a shop, they have to be spoken to, mm -hmm. how to behave, yeah, and where to sit. The mother's not prepared. Yeah, and she's not putting time in with the children. And so that's what we're saying. People are saying if they're behaving like that in, in someone else's um, business, or uh, how are they behaving at home? Mm. And so you can see that there's, there's no order at mm. home. And so the quick what we're saying about order, how does it go? That order, chaos. If you don't have order, there's chaos. Yeah. And you can see there's chaos. Mm. And you can see there's no... There's no Torah, there's no love, there's no Torah in that family because yeah. there's no order. And like Yahushua's all about order, he has everything in order. So he wants us in order, he wants me in order. And so I know the, the, the chastising that I go through to get in order. And so that's what I have to put into my, my children. Mm. And so yeah. she's not putting in her children. It's just there's no, the, who is not. In, in um, people's lives, there. Um, Maybe I didn't explain it well enough. What is the process? What is the plan? What do you actually 
do to rear children according to what we've discussed so far and according to the scripture. What have you got to use and what have you got to do? Like, lay out a plan. You've got to... Um... Accentuate the positive. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, what we've had to start doing, and it's been pro predominantly Amy, because I'm not here during the day, but, and she's seen amazing results, is the child, if they back chat. Because when we first arrived in this house, we were just paranoid and nervous, and the children were just ruling our lives. We couldn't even have a conversation because one of them would run in and need something, and with five kids, you know, they'd be sitting at the dinner table and they'd be just loud. And through many discussions with Chris and Victoria, we have gotten control, a lot more control, over the children. So they know at dinner time, there's no talking. All we have to say now is, hey, no talking. There's no talking and they remember. They instantly remember because it's been for eight, good eight weeks now. Like Amy started, um, when we first put that table out there, she took them out there for a couple of meals and the whole routine sort of started falling apart. I said, oh, I would like them, unless we're having a family meal, like on Sabbath, and I would like them to keep eating at the bench because they were in a routine there and they know their place, what was going on, they know they're not allowed to talk there. Once they come out here, everything changed, it was chaotic again. So we put them back into that routine and it's great. They have to put their bowls in their plates away and everything like that. So we became the bosses again. We started telling them, this is what we expect of you in our house. So of course, as soon as Chris and Victoria left, Josiah uh, said to Amy, oh, that was, that was Chris and Victoria's rule. We don't have to do that. And he got taken into the bedroom and he had to put his hands on the bed. And uh, of course they try to kick and scream and they put their hand in the way and sometimes they get their hands smacked. And um, so now they have to hold a book that sits on the bed and they get three, three really hard smacks and they, they get into line really quick, don't they? And so um, I don't, we don't care if people think that's abuse because that's teaching the children the truth. And they know when daddy speaks, when mummy speaks, they listen, they respond, they do what they're told. Um, even Aaliyah now, she, Aaliyah's actually the best at it, she's only two. Whenever Amy talks to her, yes mummy, yes mummy, yes mummy, you know, and she's picked it up better than all the others. Luca does it really well. Luca's, you know, yes daddy, yes mummy, instead of this, oh but we wanted it, oh but, oh but, oh but, oh but, oh but, and I just stop back chatting, no more, but when I speak, this is what I'm saying I want. So shut up and give me the right response, you know, and so they're getting into line and it's like it's on and off right now like it's still getting them it takes a long time to break bad habits we were yesterday we were looking at you know, talking about the children and josiah day before josiah was responding to something we just looked at each other and went gee we just screwed that child up you know just you can hardly talk to him he just either cries or takes it personally or you know luca's a bit the same too Brandon's just crazy. But the last two, since we've been coming in more, are just so happy and cheerful and that you can talk to them, they don't take it personally. So we have to spend more time with the older ones because we've been so caught up in, oh, every philosophy that came along. Smacking, not smacking, homeschooling, not homeschooling, you know, what to do, the latest trend of parenting we've tried, it, you know, and meanwhile the children aren't getting in. And now Josiah is eight years old. And so since we started, just, just put everything else aside, Torah. Torah says to smack your children if they're naughty. You know, don't whack them across the head. Don't do it when you're furious and, you know, fisty cuff. You know, don't do anything like that. You, it's planned. Okay, you, you've got to go in and take your punishment. When we get home, you've got to go and put your hands on the bed. You know, and so it's planned. It's not something that's, a bit, it's not like I'm really furious and I'm going to bug punch you up. It's like, it's discipline. And like, you, like Jason was saying, you, we get flogged and we're naughty. Flogged big time. Um, so the children have to be too, so they learn the process. So, what are you... That's you really think? good, the routines that you're going through. And, and I know that 
um, we've, we've got to know that Torah is the mm. beginning of our, our life training. Mm. So this is what we've got to instill in the kids. Mm. And how do you instill Torah? Mm. Is talking about the stories, reading the scriptures, like daily reading the scriptures is great. Mm. And then the practical application that says when you wake up in the morning, you think of... Um, mm. Think of Torah, think of this word in everything we do when we walk mm. um, down, down by the way, when we're talking and, and going here or going to and fro, we have to talk and relate everything to Torah. Mm. And that's the practical application. So mm. I think the, tra the, the instilling the knowledge of Torah mm. has to be taught to the kids <coughs> from a very early age because they understand and pick up so much mm. From six months, twelve months, they yeah. understand everything. Mm. So that's that's the Ten Commandments are taught to them, and mm. they have they can um, relay the Ten Commandments. Mm. They understand why. That's the basic principle of our morality: is the Ten mm. Commandments, and that's what's been taken out of schools, taken out of the world. Mm. But that's the basis, and that's what what I think the rearing of the children has to start with that basis. Mm. And, and then the practical application of talking daily every every part of the day with your children as you grow up. And and mm. then you'll see their little characters growing and you'll, you'll see their, their understanding growing and you'll get so excited because they start to relate to you about Yahushua and, mm. and who Yahua is and their <coughs> relationship with their creator. Mm. I mean, I was brought up Catholic and I had those principles instilled in me and that was a, a very strict, ordered um, system and the, the mindset of Catholicism is um, controlling, totally mm. controlling and so you put that before anything when you, wherever you go and it's taken me a long time to get rid of that mindset mm. and to actually realise Yahusha has so much more than what the circus has and what Catholicism has. Mm. And their way is, is harsh and hard and cruel and, and you know, Do you know if you're dominating. Still the Jesuits? And because I was trained by the Jesuits, well, this, was, this is why I've had such a, a dreadful attitude in so many ways. And Yahusha <laughs> has taught me his way is so gracious, his way is loving, his way is is forgiving, his way is so different. And so looking at childhood rearing all around, all around the place, you can just relate to your own and you can see Torah is the most wonderful way how Yahushua grows people in their personality, how he, mm. uh, and, and the world is trying to make it happen, but because of their ignorance of Torah, mm. There's no way that they can ever achieve it because they don't have his basic principles and his spirit. And it's, mm -hmm. it's impossible because they're doing it from the wicked one, from the evil one. Mm. So you can see that um, Torah is amazing how clever Yahushua has been to put this into our hearts where... The little ones can learn and he, they can feel him and know him and relate to him and have his spirit mm. all around them and the protection and the, the most wonderful things can be explained to young ones. And like you said, your kids don't get sick and they, they have this incredible protection. Wouldn't that be so wonderful if kids around the world mm. would know this? But because of the incredible oppression of the Jesuits and the UN and the the system has just stopped mm. all that and they're blocking it and they're wanting to control it and take it and cover it. But we're mm. speaking out today and we want people to know that there is a wonderful way through Torah, through Yahushua, that we can have our children saved. We can have them and see them get delivered through his wonderful name. Mm. And it's just amazing because you know by faith your children will grow up and they all have their ways to go and they have to find him in themselves, but they will return. Mm. And the worst thing that's ha that happens is the um, Jesuits and these big organisations know 
And Satan knows scripture and he knows that if you will train children in the way they will go so they will they will have them for life. They try they train all the young children in the world in that way and then they're growing up ignorant. No character, no uh, personality, no strength in their in their whole being, full of sickness, full of problems, like we've been saying before. Mm. And that's the difference that Torah has in our lives. That's the mm. difference. So, so strong, the, the, the difference. And mm. Yahushua wants us to, to see how, how important and how delicate our young ones are and how mm. incredible it is that they get the truth. They get the real truth of every situation. You love them. <laughs> I'm just looking at him. <laughs> Someone else have a go. <laughs> that's, that's a good point that you made at the end there. They get the truth. Like, children don't have to... When we learn the truth, and, and know about Yahushua and Torah and everything, like, and we have to come out of Christianity, we have to come out of all this stuff. Oh. We have to go through, get rid of all the different mindsets. Kids are like a clean slate. Yeah. And if you fill them with the truth from the beginning, they don't have to fight no. all the different mindsets to come into that. That it's just normal for them. It's just, oh yeah, well that's just the way it is. You don't celebrate Christmas. Why would you do that? You know, yeah. like it's normal know. from the beginning. Mm. Like you were talking about Sophia, it took her two weeks and she totally understands. Yeah. Like, because this would be what probably her first year she'd really be aware of Christmas. So it's like, what is this? You know, it's fascinating, mm. exciting. But when you come along and you say, well, it's not real though, it's not true, it's wrong, it's evil what they're doing, mm. they, it doesn't take them long at all to click and go, well, yeah, okay, that's true, because they, they don't have all the filters that we have and everything that we've been taught to, and that we have to go through first before we can before we can process it and go, okay, that's okay, yes, okay, I agree or I believe, or, you know, they can just get it quicker and easier and we don't mm. give them credit for that. Because we think of ourselves or what we've had to come out of. We don't look at the fact that they don't have to go through that. And we think, oh no, they're not going to see in that. Or they're not going to get that. It just amazes me some of the things the kids get. And you go, oh, you understood that? It took me ages to get that. How did you get it? <laughs> so mm. we, don't, we don't ever notice that. But two things I was thinking when you, was, you guys were talking, which, like what you're saying about like filling them and teaching them and stuff, is like that's what I was thinking. But then... Mm. I thought as well, like the first step in like the process is like doing it ourselves. Mm. Because when I look at our children, they are exactly. spitting images of us and mm. everything wrong we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> like I look at Josiah mm. and he is a mini mark. Yeah. Everything about him. That's why is, we clash all the time. Yeah, he is. <laughs> and he's, but he's copied everything he's seen Mark doing that hasn't been great. Not what I've said to do. <laughs> What I've done. Everything is done. And so I think it's like the process is starting at that point, like working yeah. on ourselves, change yourself. change yourself and behave the way you want them you want them to behave mm. rather than just expecting them to do it and we can keep doing what we want to do. Mm. We've had to change ourselves mm. to mm. to see changes in them. So that's good point. Yeah. That is like I think that when we're talking about like Chris was saying, what's the process? I think, in my mind, that's the first part of it. That's the first step in the process. Yeah. If you haven't got kids yet, change now. It's a lot easier if you do it before you have children. <laughs> because then you don't have to worry about them picking up all the bad things. Yeah. But, and so that's why it is harder with Josiah. Like we talk about Josiah a lot, but he's the oldest and he's seen a lot of what we've gone through and we haven't had it together. And he's coming to that age where he's coming into his own a lot more. And his own is all our bad points because that's yeah. what he's been watching over the years. We can teach him everything we want to teach him verbally, but if we don't haven't actually done it, he hasn't cared. He, mm. he just watches everything we do. He's just mm. going to do that, and that's what all the kids are doing. So changing yourself it seems to be like the first step in the whole process. He's seen so many routines start. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, what are we doing now? So many charts go up on the wall that never get used. Yeah. He's seen them all. This yeah. one's been. But that leads me to my next point, though, that I was just thinking. Ooh, good. Thanks. <laughs> that was the other thing, though. Consistency. Yeah. That's one thing that we have lacked badly, really badly. Mm. Like, you can say, yes, I'm going to do this, but you've got to do it consistently all the time. Yeah. You've got to, if they're mucking up, you've got to get up and punish straight away every time. You can't go, oh, I can't be bothered this time. You have to put yourself off mm. and think about the child that you're raising 
Mm. And it is about loving them. Do I love them enough to actually want to see their behave, them behave properly, to grow up and have a nice life? Because if they grow up behaving badly, with bad attitudes, not wanting to work hard, not obeying Torah, they're going to have a hard life. Mm. Yeah. But if they have Yahushua in them and they grow up and we've taught them properly, it would be so much better for them. Mm. And so it is. It's like putting ourselves off and mm. stop thinking about ourselves and being so selfish, which is what so many people like these days. They have kids and then they want the kids to go and do their thing or they go off and have their, their wonderful mm. life and everything and forget about it. Mm. But we have to put ourselves off to get up and go and deal with everything every single time. Yeah, I've heard And that. that's what we've had to start. That's like, a bit I heard. It takes effort to do like to, to do it properly. It takes effort. Yeah, because you have to do it every single yeah. time. You have to act on everything. You have to be ready to talk. So they say something, you can't go. I feel like having this conversation now. You have to be okay. Mm. Let's do it. Let's mm. talk about it. Mm. All right. No, that's not. You know, you shouldn't be behaving like that. No, you shouldn't be saying that, or you shouldn't think that, or you shouldn't do that, or. But you have to be ready to go there at any time and turn off the TV mm. or close the computer mm. and walk away. Mm or put down your food and walk off, you have to be willing yeah. to stop what you're doing and deal with everything straight away as it happens. Mm. And that's something like for us, that that's been a big thing because we've been really lazy mm. and just like, ah, I'll deal with it later, oh, who cares, or I'm just ignoring them this time. Well, I only used to discipline them when they bothered me. So if they weren't, if you'd, like nowadays you'd say, oh, they're going to be smacked for that. Oh, it's not bothering me, it's fine. No, it's got to be, it was just always emotional. Mm. Like, and because it was mainly Josiah to start with, like, do this, no, you do that, no. no I, I, you say something, they say it, it escalates to the point where I'm going to whack you, get it, get it, and it's all anger. Whereas now, I'm not hardly not as angry as much, it's like, well, they're, they're not bothering me. In that point too, though, you've got to cut it off at the beginning, I don't know, you know. Yeah. You, you do this now, no. Get in the bedroom and have a smack on the bottom. Not, Don't yes, you, you do, do it. it. No, I'm not going to do it. Yes, you, you can't so get that far. Yeah. The, first, the first time it's, mm. okay, smack, straight away. It's standing Every up. time, first time, Truth every time. rather than emotions. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But the, you just look at the behaviour, that's wrong behaviour, it's got to be punished. You know? I mean, obviously, some, sometimes it's just a stop, and they stop. Not everything is a smack, but a lot of things in the day, most things, it's behavioural. One thing I think that you've got to realise as they're growing up, <coughs> what's in them? Sin. And you look at the scripture, it says, bring a child up in the way it should go, then there's a gap. It says, and they will return to it. Mm. So, what does that mean? They will return. What's happened? They've got to go away first. They've got to do their own Experience. thing. Experience. Something's going to happen, isn't it? Mm. So that you don't get disappointed in your child rearing. Child rearing. Mm. You're going to know something's going to happen, yeah. that sin is there, and it's Yahusha is going to have to deal with it. Mm. Mm. And they're going to come back to Yahushua, yeah. back to the way. Mm. So you've got to figure out a practical way, a really easy way. The first thing you have to, like you said, do it yourself. And you can do that in one word. It's a behaviour and it's called kindness. Yeah. In every dealing you have with your child and with each other, it must be kindness. Yeah. That's showing love. If it's not, mm. it's not, it's not right. <clears throat> You're manifesting things that you shouldn't. So it's just one word, one thing you've got to do, and that's be kind. Mm. Everything now doesn't have to be dealt with at the moment. And I think you need a practical system. You know when someone comes into the salon, you greet them at the front door, you take them down to the basin, you put the towels on around them, you've got to teach the staff this. You teach them how to shampoo, teach them how to bring them back to the chair, how to set up, how to get out the equipment that the hairdresser needs and the products and everything, run the product through the hair, comb it through so it's got no knots, bang, you've got a system. You have to have this with children too 
And as they get old, you need a set of rules. As they get older, you need to change the rules or add more rules. So you saw how we said, don't stomp through the hallway. They know immediately inside themselves what they're actually doing when you say that to them. So you need to find rules like that that are going to make them aware. No one's to talk while they're having dinner because you're not going to digest your food properly. Right? You, so you give them three warnings before you would give them a smack. You've got one warning, that's two warnings, once more, and I'll smack you. I don't want to smack you, but you'll be making me smack you if you misbehave. So you've got the three warnings, and they know there's three warnings. And then when you go in there on the third warning, you're calm. And you give them their hard smack on the backside, and after that you love them. And it's going to take a little while, because you're fighting sin in the flesh of a child. A lot of people don't realise that, that there's sin in children. But it's there manifesting at you constantly, challenging you. What does it say in that article that Lou wrote in the paper? That sin is against everything that Yahuwah stands for. It's going to try and overtake it and destroy it. Mm -hmm. So you've got that in the children coming at you. And I don't think you guys are aware of that. No. You're dealing with sin. Mm. How old are those spirits? Mm. Hmm? So you need to know about the sowing, the sowing of the word. Once you form your rules, from when they get up in the morning, you've got to make your bed, you've got to do your teeth, you've got to do, have a shower, whatever you guys decide. And each home can have different rules, I'm sure. You know what I mean? But you have to lay down a set of rules so the children know what's right and what's not. And it doesn't matter what rules people have in their home, it's just a guide to speak to them and lead them to Torah. Because in those rules you can find lots of things in the Torah. That's why we want you to not talk at, while you're having your meal. That's why we don't want you to stomp down. It's disrespectful to everybody else. And you start teaching them Torah, Torah attitudes. You must be kind. Mm -hmm. You know? And you, as you said, you are the teachers. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to be guilty. <clears throat> That's the worst thing young parents can be guilty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not right for you to be guilty. That's not what you're called out for to be guilty. You called out and you've been blessed with these children. He's got a plan and he's got a job. You've got to lead them through your set of rules and the whole house follows those rules and knows the timing of everything. When dinner's going to be, when this is going to be, what you've got to do, the schooling, and there's rules and there's warnings with each one. Yeah, so it's got to be disciplined like that. You need to lay out a set of rules. You know, the set of the list that we've got in the salon with all the things they have to do to clean the salon every day, and they've got a ticket. You have that in your home, and they've got to tick what they've done. You work it out to suit who? Your family routine. So I think that's essential in, in your lives yourself, you know? As I was saying with, with uh, Victoria, how upset she was because she felt she failed with Matthew. And I said, that's ridiculous. I said, you're a wonderful mother. You did so much for him. You made his life wonderful. You were fantastic and wonderful. I just love what you did. You know, I think you're crazy. And I said, there's nothing wrong with Matthew. He's a beautiful, wonderful young chap. He may be in confusion at the moment, but he knows the truth, and I believe in Yahushua that his balance will come. And it's his battle now, he's got the truth, and he's got the other. He has to work it out himself. He needs space to make those decisions. Yeah, same as 
like when Yahushua split all, all of us up and we all went different ways. Mm. Look what's happened now. Mm. <laughs> He's brought us back, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. In a better way, all the way around. Yeah? Mm. He doesn't want us looking at each other. He wants us to be looking at him. Mm. Yeah. But the main thing we're talking about today is to get those disciplines and routines. Mm. Right? Once you get your disciplines, your rules, and it starts from wake up to bedtime. And in between there's times where they can have fun and everything else, but you still need those disciplinary rules for their future. Mm -hmm. So they've got something to compare to as they grow up. Mum and Dad did this for us. They got us to do this. We were, and they'll remember. They'll remember the disciplines and they'll remember the rules and they'll be grateful. And because they'll know there's Torah behind each one of it, they may abuse you and walk out and go off and blah, 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 but they will come back to Torah, not to, yeah, to us. That's what we have to remember. See? So these are the things we need to do. That's what I was talking about, getting disciplined, getting where do we start, what do we do. Mm -hmm. So you've got a system of rules that you guys make up from morning till night. Everything has to go down in the house. As you said, you've got to stick by them. Mm -hmm. right? And then you give three warnings before the smack. Then after the smack, it's love. love. And you'll find that will really work. You will get on top of the evil. The sin won't be dominating you. Mm -hmm. You will have it in order. Mm -hmm. yeah? so there's lots of um, disappointment in children and we're foolish if we allow ourselves and we don't look at the scripture. They will come back to it, which means they're going to... They're going to go from it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So brothers and sisters, wherever you are, understand what we're saying. Not in a bad way, but a good way, a gentle way, a real way. How do you feel about that? Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. What do you feel? Because yeah, you're the one that's got to do it all. Yeah. You've seen the charts that he's done for the kids in the salon to clean, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, same thing here again. What, yeah. what you want, because you're the one home teaching, yeah. that your kids don't go to school. Their kids go to school, they have different rules. To what you guys will. And you can always, you know, compare the rules. Oh, you do that, do you? Oh, well, I'll do that too. Mm -hmm. You can add, you can get the kids down. You say, we're going to start a new thing now and I'm going to explain it to you And because it's always good learning for them, new things coming up. We're going to start doing this, 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 this. And you have teaching about it. We're going to teach you all this. It's going to take a week to learn it. Mm -hmm. So giving them time. It's not just what on them and you get whacked. You know what I mean? They get time to digest it and three warnings. Remember that rule? You're breaking that rule. You're getting three warnings. Remember, you only get three. And I don't want to smack you. Please don't make me smack you. See? I love you. Please don't make me smack you. And that's the way you go. And you work out your rules in the home, what you want. And they all start doing the rules. They all start doing, making their beds and doing what they do. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's brilliant. Well, that's the main point yeah. I wanted to make through all this. Mm. You know? And if you don't bring your children up according to Torah and discipline and routines and you don't feed them Torah they're going to end up getting sick and mental, mental problems. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on in the world today, brothers and sisters. They've taken the Ten Commandments out of the teaching of young people. Mm -hmm. So there's no morality, no morals, and that's what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go today, you're dealing with no morals. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank you. It was a great discussion. We might add some more later on if the guys think of it. Yeah, fantastic.
So brothers and sisters, we're just finishing up this video and I've just gotten off the phone with Chris and Victoria and they said, Yahushua spoke to them and said to them, how lovely would it be? How would Yahushua feel if by the time a child is in their teenage years and it's time to hand them over to Yahushua, that they were taught in the ways of Torah, that we bring up our children the right way so that there's order and routine and love and joy and the correct behavior so that when it comes time for Yahushua to step in and lead this child, they can hear Yahushua's voice. They know what's right and wrong. They know what the Torah says, and they know the right behavior. They know how to organize things, how to use their gifts for his service, so that he can come in when, they're, when they are at the right age, and he can lead them, and he can guide them, because we have trained them the right way. We've done everything to the best of our ability, lived for our family, so brothers and sisters, I urge you, I encourage you, put off your own life and focus on your children because they need, they need all the time in the world with you. You are the person who knows Yahushua. You can hear Yahushua's voice and you know the Torah. And after watching this video, you should have some very practical instructions now how to pass this on to your children, how to keep Satan out of your home. We love you, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Keep fighting. Keep bringing up your children so that they will be part of Yahushua's army. Loving and fighting the evil. Keeping it out of their vessel, out of their, ha their home, out of their life. Keep going, brothers and sisters. We love you. Shalom. So be it. You need more of Torah's light inside you.